Gracias, thank you. Bonjour, uh, we're here from CONCACAF Men's Olympic Qualifying, the semifinal stage. We're here with Canada head coach, Mauro Biello. We'll start with questions. Derek Van Deest. Hi, Mauro. Um, obviously a disappointing result tonight. Uh, you guys looked like you were, you were in good shape and then that mistake by James really kind of turned the game around. Just, just your thoughts on the contest. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we had, uh, I thought we had the tactics right. Uh, we were frustrating them, not really giving them uh, the chances. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. Uh, we have to be perfect. You have to be perfect against a team, a team like that. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of good players on that team. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we made that mistake and uh, it changed the game. Uh, you know, but uh, I think we're, we're better. We're a better team after this game. I think, uh, you know, you always learn and grow from uh, games like this. And I think that's the, uh, in, in the end, that's the end in mind is, is, is how to improve and how to be better. And, um, you know, the boys are disappointed, but they put a hell of a shift. A team that was together for maybe six days, a team that, uh, you know, uh, had to come together in such a short period of time and, and perform. Uh, you know, I, I give credit to, to a lot of those boys in that dressing room and they're pretty disappointed right now. Thank you, merci. On va tourner en français. Jérémy, s'il vous plaît. Oui, merci beaucoup, Richard. Bonsoir, Mario. Mario, je sais que vous êtes déçu ce soir du résultat, mais bon, vous avez quand même donné une bonne opposition à l'adversaire. Mais à quel point c'est décevant de, de concéder le premier but, malheureusement, sur une erreur, là, James, qui avait connu une solide première demi, mais Bon, une erreur individuelle là-dessus. Et ensuite, un peu de malchance aussi sur un ballon qui rebondit sur Montgomery. Euh, disons que les Mexicains n'ont pas marqué, n'ont pas créé ces buts-là eux-mêmes, même si le deuxième était sur un coup franc. Mais à quel point c'est décevant cette, cette première erreur, malheureusement, pour James? Et qu'est-ce que tu lui as dit euh, en rentrant au vestiaire après le match? Non, c'est sûr que je pense qu'on a, on a eu une bonne première demi au niveau de... de... Euh, de nos tactiques et comment on voulait affronter cette équipe-là. On savait que sous les côtés, c'était une équipe qui, qui peut nous poser des problèmes. On a bien défendu sous les côtés. Et, euh, et à la fin, en deuxième demi, euh, comme j'ai dit, on a fait cette erreur-là. Euh, on leur a donné le, le premier but et, et puis ça nous a fait mal. Et euh, c'est des choses qu'il faut éviter contre des équipes comme ça. Et vous voyez, c'était euh, la même chose contre les Américaines. Ils ont fait une erreur, ils ont compté. Alors, euh, avec James, écoute, il a eu un une excellent tournoi. Et euh, euh, je suis déçu. Je suis déçu pour lui que c'est arrivé comme ça. Mais quand même, c'est un, un jeune gardien avec un grand, un grand avenir. Et euh, on a vu ça dans, dans ce tournoi. On a joué contre une équipe. Euh, qui a des joueurs euh, qui, qui ont une, une grande valeur au niveau de, de leur qualité. Et, et nous, on est une équipe qui s'est mise en place pendant une semaine. Et je suis très fier de, de cette équipe, comment euh, on a joué, on a travaillé ensemble en équipe. Euh, alors, pour nous, euh, je suis fier de ça. Et, euh, et, et d'ici maintenant, il faut grandir. Et toujours contre le Mexique, on sait qu'il faut être... Euh, il faut être à 100 dans tous les, tous les moments. Et malheureusement, euh, ils nous ont fait euh, coûter cette erreur. Merci beaucoup. Harry, s'il vous plaît. Oui, bonjour Moro. Euh, Moro, je voulais juste savoir euh, que, si jamais il y a eu un changement tactique entre la première et la deuxième mi-temps. On a vu, par exemple, Zachary Bouguiard jouer beaucoup plus haut à un moment donné. Est-ce que c'était euh, fait exprès? Quelle était la logique derrière ça? Oui, euh, je pense qu'à la fin de la première demi, on a décidé de changer un peu le rythme, de, de, mettre un peu, de, de les presser un peu plus haut. Je pense que on les a pris euh, un peu euh, dans ce moment-là. Ils ne nous attendaient pas de presser. Alors, on a fait ce changement tactique euh, à la fin de la première demi et, euh, pour, pour donner un look différent. Et euh, ils ont eu euh, quelques problèmes en sortant. Et euh, c'est ça, de changer un peu le momentum. Et je, je pense que les joueurs ont bien fait ça. 
Et, euh, et c'est ça, à la fin, la deuxième demi, on, euh, on a commencé la deuxième demi euh, avec la même intensité. Et puis, on a changé, on a retourné en cinq derrière, on anime en trois. Alors, euh, je pense que euh, les jours ont, ont bien fait et ont appliqué qu ce qu'on voulait euh, à, à, à 100 et, et malheureusement, il y avait des erreurs. Il y a, il y a, il y a la qualité de l'autre côté. Et, et ça, c'est ceux des joueurs de, de ce niveau-là qui, euh, qui nous ont fait mal. Merci. On va prendre notre question en français, Gavino, followed by three questions in English. Gavino, s'il vous plaît. Merci, Richard. Moreau, est-ce que l'absence de Derek Cornelius fait en sorte que tu as été obligé de jouer un 5-3-2 ou un 5-4-1 ou bel et bien le plan, c'était d'utiliser cinq défenseurs avec ou sans Derek Cornelius? Merci. Oui, c'était ça le plan. Je pense que ça a bien marché. Euh, le problème, c'était que Cornelius était blessé. Il y a Callum qui, qui, a, qui a joué avec une déchirure. Il y avait Norman qui était blessé à la jambe. Alors, à la fin, on voulait avoir cette couverture derrière, mais on pensait, si on avait euh, cette couverture sous les côtés, vous voyez un joueur comme, comme Antuna, euh, c'est un grand joueur, un gars qui, qui a joué contre la, la première équipe dans la Gold Cup il y a deux ans, qui nous a fait mal là. Et euh, alors, pour nous, c'était de, de bien gérer ces joueurs-là sous les côtés. Et je, je pense que Zoran, il a bien fait, et même Marcus Godinho sous les côtés au niveau de, de cette gestion euh, de ces joueurs-là. Merci. Thank you very much. Sergio, followed by John and then Peter. Hi, coach. Thank you very much. Sergio Venegas from the Portrese. Uh, so close, so far at the same time. If you have the chance to repeat this game, what will you change on your tactics? And do you have the time to talk with the players? And what do you say on the locker room to level up the, 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 the stamina? Or what, what can you say to them just to, to make it happy? or? Yeah. Well, look, obviously to, to make it happy, it's very difficult. You know, you, you know, for sure, every player in that dressing room wanted to uh, qualify for the Olympics. And uh, it's, it's a dream for a lot of players. Uh, unfortunately, uh, tonight we had a tall task uh, in front of us. And uh, I'm still very proud, very proud of the group of what they have accomplished in such a short period of time. And, you know, uh, obviously that was a very good Mexican team you saw out there. Those are the best Mexican U23s. Uh, that we played tonight and uh, for us uh, to, to be in the game for 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 that amount of time and, and really managing them and frustrating them for a good period I think uh, was very good and, and I think you have to be perfect against a team like that uh, and unfortunately uh, you know there was a, an error that that cost us and changed changed a little bit the momentum uh, but obviously uh, you know you, we have to take everything into consideration in terms of who's healthy who was injured fitness levels, you know, uh, I think uh, it's, it's very difficult uh, to ask a team that is not uh, is in preseason to play uh, four games in, in, in eight days. So uh, when you when you put all that into consideration, I'm very proud of what the team did. And, and you know, we, we lost to uh, the best team in CONCACAF and it was a fight. Thank you, John Molinero. Hi, Mauro. Uh, apologies if you already asked this in French. Um, obviously, qualifying for the Olympics was the goal, but I'm sure you take some positives uh, away from uh, from the boys' performance at this tournament. Maybe you just talk about what were the positives for you. Yeah, I think there was a lot of positives, and uh, you know, when I when I think, you know, the the end in mind for sure from a performance standpoint, you want to make it to the Olympics. But the end in mind in this program is is to have an alignment from the men's national team all the way down and. And for me, it was to build a foundation with the group, uh, you know, and graduate some of these players to move on to the men's national team. And, and I think that's, uh, that's the end in mind with this, uh, with this uh, organization. Um, you know, I think for, for us, yes, we're, we're disappointed. But, you know, there's some good players that had some, some good performances out there. And you think of a young player, Lucas Diaz, you know, who, who was in isolation for nine days and, and couldn't train. And, Uh, and then and, and was able to come into to games off the bench and do well as an 18-year-old against a, a, a very good team. So those are, those are positives. Davey Norman had a solid, uh, solid, he had a solid tournament uh, defending. Uh, I, I thought, you know, we, we did a really good job defending Marcus Godinho and, 
And then, you know, Zoran Basang had a hell of a task today also uh, versus a, a top level player. So when you when you look at that and, and you, you think of the foundation that's been put in place and now it's up to these players and their careers, you know, they're to, to continue to push their careers along now when they go back to their clubs and continue to push to get to that next level. And uh, I, I think they they represented this country with pride. They fought out there. They gave everything. Uh, but unfortunately, it, it was it was uh, we came up short. Um, but there's a lot of positives we could build from. Thank you. And Peter, this will be the last question for tomorrow before we bring David in. Hi, Mauro. Um, on situations like uh, how the first goal played out, are the players instructed to build from the back uh, in those situations or encouraged to build from the back in those situations? Yeah, I mean today's today's tactics where we weren't, uh, and it was it was very clear. And um, to get the ball forward, uh, you saw that in the the whole first half. Uh, unless they would back off to give us that space, then we could start our platforms and start building from there. Uh, that was uh, they were pressing a negative pass, and it's clear to get that ball up and get the team up uh, in that moment. Um, uh, you know, the decision was taken to try to find, try to split them. Um, and unfortunately, uh, they missed the pass and uh, they were able to, to hurt us. Thank you very much, Moral. We'll now bring in David Norman. Okay. Thanks, guys. Hi, David. Uh, I know you're going to be disappointed after how things played out there, but... On a, on a personal level, the tournament that you've had coming into this after the injuries that, that you have had, playing at a position that you haven't played that often in your career, how do you look at the, the tournament for you personally? Uh, I think you put a spot on Michael. I think the first thing is disappointment. Um, I don't have really had, had much time to let that sink in yet. Um, it's a, a group of boys that are, are disappointed. Um, Personally, I'm, I'm happy with the, with the minutes I've played. Uh, we'll have to look and analyze and um, go from there. Thank you very much. Derek Van Deest, Post Media. David, just uh, you, you got a feel for James. You guys have he had played so well throughout this tournament, I guess. What, what, uh, what do you say to him? And just, he's just, he's been such a rock for you guys today. And, and a mistake like that just uh, you know, must have been gutting for him. Yeah, you can't put anything on James. Like you said, he's been a rock the whole tournament. Uh, he kept us in the game against El Salvador, the second half against Haiti. Uh, we had four saves against Haiti in the second half that, that kept us in the game. Uh, so no, you can't, you can't put anything on him. Uh, he's a quality player and he'll be looking to push on again this year in Montreal. Thank you, merci. Peter Galindo. Hi, David. Um, obviously, you were playing center back for the entirety of, of, of the tournament. Um, how did you like playing in the role? How, how much comfort do you think you've gained um, playing in that position as the games have, have gone on? Yeah, I've, I've played a lot there in, in training the last couple of years. These were my first games that I've, I've really played. Um, I enjoy it. I think I have the qualities to, to be a quality center back at this level. Um, obviously, there's still a lot I need to learn positionally, uh, both in and out of possession. But uh, I'm, I'm happy with the games I played there and just want to push on from here. Thank you. Merci. Hadi Raphael, souple, en anglais. Uh, thank you, Richard. My answer, my uh, question was already answered. Thank you. Thank you very much. Axel, please. So you're just on mute. All right, thank you very much. Wendy, please. Wendy, you're just on mute. Hi, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Yeah. Hi, hi, David. Sorry about um, today's unfortunate loss. Um, 
but your emotions, what are they right now as a team and, you know, as an individual player, how do you bounce back after this loss? And what would you tell dual players that are watching you and are probably feeling the same emotions as you? Uh, disappointment, frustration. Um, you know, we, we had a game plan that I think the first half kind of went to script like we wanted it to. We had belief across the group. Uh, we really thought that this was going to be, be the year that, you know, we, we pushed Canada to the next level. Um, and we had full belief that was going to happen. So disappointed for sure. Thank you. We'll take one last call for questions. Sergio, you can go next. Thank you very much. Good night, uh, David. I know you're still young and you have a long career far away at this moment, but this, this game will be changed for any victory in, a, in advance on the future just to get to the, the Olympics of Tokyo. Thank you very much. What was the question, sorry? Sergio, do you want to just repeat the back half of that question? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, will you change any future game for get to the Tokyo? Yeah, it's, you know, getting to Tokyo was our goal as a group. We're going to be in, in a lot of big games again going forward, whether that's World Cup qualifying, Con uh, Conga Cup, Gold Cup. Um, like you said, we're still young, so we're going to be in a lot of big games. We need to feel this, this feeling right now of disappointment and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Thank you very much, everyone. That will close the CONCACAF Men's Olympic Qualifying Press Conference with Canada. Thanks, Richard.